Hey, everybody. Sorry, I am late. As soon as I was about to go live, I had to run to the bathroom. But we are here now. Um, so I do want to start off this live like I start off every live, which is by saying that... Um, this is um, a live video. So this is a live tutorial versus a pre-recorded tutorial. Basically what that means is that this is interactive. I answer questions in real time. Um, you know, if I have a story to tell, I tell a story. We just, you know, converse, all those things. Um, if you're looking for something that is more structured between 15 to 30 minutes is typically how my videos are. Um, you can head over to my channel. I have plenty of pre-recorded content there. Um, not of this specific project. I have sublimated on a canvas before, but not this particular like Canva template that I made. This is the first time I've used this template, but the process of sublimating onto the canvas using the satin fabric, I have done that before. Okay in a pre-recorded video. I should have linked it, but hindsight is 2020. But hello everybody and thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, <coughs> forewarning, I still have a cough. I'm not gonna make this live too, too long only because I think I'm getting sick again. Like I woke up, so like a month ago, I had the flu like really, really bad. And then ever since then, I've had this really kind of like lingering cough. And I want to say Friday of last week, I woke up and I just felt really, really terrible. Like my throat was hurting again and basically having all the same symptoms that I had a month ago. And so I feel pretty good today, but... um. I'm just like really fatigued. So this live is not going to be too, too long. We are going to do this project. I'm going to do, so I did do this for Instagram. I always, whenever I go live, <laughs> I always like to try out the project that I'm going to go live with um, before I go live, just to make sure that I can do it, just to make sure that my printer works. And then even when I do check it, sometimes the printer still doesn't work because I think it was one time my printer would not print on live, even though I had, you know, used it earlier that day. But um, this is, I did create one already. So this is, I'm going to be doing another one of these that says Grammy. Um, this is a Canva template that I did make. Um, it is in my Etsy shop. The Grammy one that I'm about to do now is not in my Etsy shop yet because I literally just made it like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> but the mama one is in my Etsy shop. And then once I get off a live, I will go ahead and add in the Grammy template in the Etsy shop. Okay. But this is what we're doing. So this is just a, um, what is it called? Like a stretch canvas. Um, so it's, it's not the flat one, even though you can do this with the flat ones too. You don't have to do it with these thicker ones. I think I want to say it's called a stretch canvas, but I can't remember exactly. So you don't have to use the thicker ones. If you want to use the flat ones, you can do this project on the flat ones. The only thing is if you're using the flat ones, I'm going to be using a staple gun today. I would not use a staple gun if you're going to do, going to do the flat ones because the staples may very well go through the front and you don't want that. So if you use the flat ones, you may want to try like fabric glue to adhere the satin. But you can do this with the flat ones as well. Um, but I basically, we are going to sublimate onto satin fabric. And just, I use a staple gun and just kind of went around the edges. And, you know, obviously I need to clean it up, get rid of the little edges. I just haven't done it yet because it's for me. It's for me. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you guys how to make the image in Canva Pro. Okay, before we get started, I want to say hello to everybody. So I'm going to scroll up to the top. 
Oh, it's a lot of y'all in here. Um, and I'm just going to say hello to everybody that I can, assuming it doesn't take too long. You guys, I had to get a new drink. I normally get, so I get one of two drinks. Though I either get the mango pineapple refresher from Dunkin' Donuts, or I get the pineapple passion fruit refresher from Starbucks. The Dunkins around me have been, I almost cussed. They have been making me really mad. Okay. They've been making me really mad lately. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe they've gotten busier because it's getting warmer up here. I'm not quite sure, but the fact that every time I go to the drive-thru, I have to pull around and take my drink back in is really upsetting me. So I was like, you know what? Today, I'm going to go to Starbucks to get the pineapple passion fruit, but then they were out. So I had to get a strawberry acai. Y'all, this is good too, though. I'm going to have to add this. I'm going to have to add this in. This strawberry acai is really good. But Duncan has been, they've been losing their minds lately. I don't know what's going on. Let me scroll up to the top. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Hey, Willie and Luis. Hey, Didi. Hey, Rhonda. How is everybody? What are you guys working on? I don't know if I said it already, but I do still have a cough. Sorry if that bothers anybody. Hey, Martha. Hey, Miss Hampton. How do you pronounce the first name? Shaterrence. Shaterrence. I hope I said that right. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Porgy Town. Hey, Lucille. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Patrice Boo. Yes, please like the video on your way in. We're about to get started. Um, like I said, in Canva Pro, I'm going to show you guys how to make this image first. Hey, Marilyn, how are you? Thank you. Hey, Dems Boo. Hey, Miss Melinda. Hey, Cynthia and Robin. Hey, Marlene. Hey, Lynn and Cynthia. Hey, Terry. Pearl S. Creations. So, sorry, I thought I put this on mute. Y'all got an Android. Well, I have two. I still have my regular iPhone, <coughs> but I got a second phone as a work phone, and it's the it's an Android, and it'd be making all little weird noises. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down just because it's a lot of people here. Um, and like I said, I don't want to be on here too too long. But hey, everybody, Miss. Nini Designs, thank you so much for joining the channel. Y'all, I don't ring my bell out. I never read what was on the inside of it. Oh, that's cute. Thank you for joining the channel. I appreciate you. Okay. Hey, everybody. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Like I said, I don't want to be on here too, too long. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I have the comments up on my phone, <coughs> but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to go over into Canva Pro. You guys, I used to have a Canva Pro link and then Canva was like, basically they told me you don't post enough content to continue to have an affiliate link, which I've never heard that before in my entire life. Because I have so much, I had so much old content. Like when I first started my YouTube channel, Canva was all I was doing. So I have so many videos from like three years ago, a lot that were still getting a lot of views. So yeah, I had stopped making like new content, but they were like, well, you don't make enough new content to continue to have an affiliate link. So 
I don't have an affiliate link with Camera Pro anymore, which I think is so goofy. That's the goofiest thing I think I've ever heard. Um, since I've been doing these lives using the Canva Pro, and then I tried to tell them that I was doing Canva Pro tutorials in my membership group, and they said I was lying. Um, because they, in order for them to see it, like proof, they would have had to join my membership because you can't see my membership videos if you're not a member, right? Canva's on some other stuff. So I tried to reapply for the affiliate program since I've been doing some Canva Pro lives. Hopefully they let me back in. But as of right now, I don't have a link because I'm not a Canva affiliate no more. So sorry. Um, I don't have the free trial link anymore. Um, but I do know if you get somebody's link, I feel like there's a crafter on YouTube who has who does have a link. Um, if somebody has a link, you can join theirs. There's a 30-day um, free trial for Canva Pro if you want to try it out. But let me go ahead and share my screen. If and when I get back into the Canva affiliate program and I can have a free trial link, I will let you guys know. <laughs> but this is the um, this is the Grammy. I'm gonna add in my the mama one so you guys can see it. Okay, so these are the two templates that I made. This is the Grammy one. It says to the one who keeps us all together, Grammy, we love you. Same thing for the mama one. It says to the one who keeps us all together, mama, we love you. Um, and then, so I really wanted to show you guys how to use this template because I have seen this kind of going around the Facebook groups and... Um, a lot of people were just having questions on how to actually use the templates that were being either sold or given or whatever. Um, and, you know, I've showed you how to do like the drag and drop templates before with the graduation fan and then the vending machine. This is kind of the same exact concept. It's going to be a drag and drop concept. The only difference is, and I think this is the part that was tripping everybody up, is that the background here, it just has like a little transparent element over it to kind of make it a little, um, one or two ways. You can either make the actual photo transparent or you can add this on there. Um, it depends on the look that you're going for. So for my image that I had here, instead of just... <coughs> Instead of just making the image transparent, it would have made it like kind of like a, a white hue, whereas the image that I have here is more of like a black hue because I added this element here and then I turned it the color black like that. So that's how I was able to kind of get the black overcast on it versus if I were just to make the actual image transparent it would kind of turn white, like it's going see-through. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. Okay, so this is the mama one that's in my shop right now. Um, and then like I said, we're gonna, I already did that one and then we're gonna go ahead and today do this one. So I'm gonna delete this mama page. And then um, if you purchase this template, this is how, it's going to look once you open it up, okay? So we're gonna start with the background and we're gonna work our way to the front. So I'm going to select this top element and I'm going to just kind of move it out of the way for a quick second. I'm gonna go to my uploads. Now you wanna make sure you kind of already have your images uploaded, you know, the ones that you wanna use for your image here, okay? So this is the one I'm going to use for the background. My little family. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just, like I said, this is the drag and drop. So when you click it, once you start to drag it, it's going to fill up that background and you're going to let go of your mouse. 
Okay. So now that's the background. Now here, if you need to adjust it for whatever reason, you're going to double left click on the background image. And then if you need to, you can make it bigger. You can't make it smaller. You can't make the image smaller than the canvas, but you can make it bigger or you can move it. So if you need to make it bigger and then move it this way, move it that way, maybe you want to crop somebody out, you know, you can do it like that. And then if you click done, you know, they'll be cropped out. But I don't want to crop anybody out. So let me go back. <clears throat> okay, so that's the that's the background image there. So now what I was talking about before is if let's say you you highlight this, if you want to go just the transparent, you would just want to make this transparent. You're going to go to this transparency icon here and you're going to select that. Now you can kind of lower the transparency. But as you can see, when you lower the transparency, it makes the image have a white hue to it, which is fine if that's the look you're going for. I kind of like this pink hue better. And in order to get the pink hue over it, you have to put something on top of it versus just lowering the transparency of the image. And again, hopefully that makes sense. But I like the pink one here because there was like shades of pink in the, in the pictures and I just think it's really pretty. So I'm going to add the pink back over it. We're going to slide it back over. And then what I'm going to do is select that. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to press the lock because I don't want my background to move anymore because now I'm going to work with these, the other wording here. So can the wording be changed? So as far as the frames on the template that I've made, um, the frames can't be changed unless you basically go in. You can go into your elements um, and you can type in, let me see. So these are the letters that I use to make the template. Agrandir. Um, you would basically have to recreate the words. It's not like you can just, it's not like text where you can highlight it and then delete it and then, you know, retype it. And it's going to look exactly the same. You would have to recreate it. You would have to add in the border the way that I did and all those things. At that point, you might as well just make your own template. If, if you need a different word here, um, I would just suggest making your own template versus purchasing mine because you're basically going to change it anyway. So you, you know, you, you're basically going to be almost making it from scratch yourself anyway. So you might as well just, you know, not, not waste your money, but you know, waste your money basically. Oh, how do you make the hue? Okay, so um, if you pur if you purchase my template, it's already going to come in this color. That's the color that I um, made the template. I made it this pink color. But let's say you want to, like, you download my template and you don't want pink. When you select it up here on the color swatch where you see the pink, you would just come up here and you can change the color. They even have gradients that you can do too as well. These gradients are really pretty. But that's how you would change the color of this element here. Um, if you purchase um, my template, it's already going to come in pink. The way that I showed you before I started, that's exactly how it's going to come in with the pink already there. It's already going to have the, um, the transparency transparency is already going to be set for you. The only thing you would need to do if you want to is change the color and you would just select it, come up to the color swatch and then pick your color. And then of course, if you want to change the transparency and make it more or less, you would just come up here to the transparency um, panel, select it and do it however you see fit but it is already gonna come in at this point.
Mm, I'm trying to see if I missed any questions. Hey, Delanda. <laughs> Team Android. I have both now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I do try to answer them in real time. Like as I'm going, I'll, you know, stop to kind of check. Um, if I miss your question, please ask it again. Okay. So when it comes to this text here, you can change this one. This would be simply just double clicking and you can delete and type in dear mama, right? So you can change this text here. All you would have to do, highlight and delete. That's it. Because this is more so like a text box versus this. these are elements, like drag and drop elements, and these are text box. So for these words, you can change to whatever you want it to say. Um, this one, same thing, the we love you, you can change that one as well. It's simply just clicking and retyping, okay? Or you can delete it all together if you only want one. Okay, so for the elements here, I'm going to go to uploads. And basically, this is going to be the same thing. We're going to drag and drop. So I'm going to zoom in because we're going to work with one letter at a time. But I want to zoom in so that, you know, I can see it. We're going to start with the G. Um, okay, let's start with, let's start with this one here. You're basically just going to play with it until you can kind of get it to fit. These are my siblings here, my brother and my sister. So I'm just kind of maneuvering the picture. For the most part, I want in this letter, I want you to be able to see me, my brother and my sister because um, I mean, my, I don't know about anybody else's mom, but my mom, my mom doesn't ever really care about seeing herself. She wants to see everybody else. Um, this looks like it's going to be good. So I'm going to click done and see how that looks. So you can see my brother's face. You can see my face. You can see my sister's face. I'm going to kind of zoom out. I think that looks okay. Oh, and with these elements as well. Well, I'll do that last. Oh, I was looking for those. They came in looking weird. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the R. And I'm going to pick another image. I'm going to pick, um, I'll pick this one. See if I can get them to fit in the R. Let me zoom in some. It's just a matter of kind of moving it. Uh oh. Moving it around, taking a step back, like zooming out, looking at it, zooming back in, seeing if you like it. I think that looks good. <coughs> Bye, Michaela. Have a good night. Natasha, that's a good deal. What size are they? All right. I'm going to move on to the letter A. 
Mm, let's pull in the grands. Let's do this one. Let's see if I can get them to all fit in the A. And then, you know, if the picture just doesn't work, like you just can't get everybody in the pic in the frame, it just doesn't look good. You know, you can try moving them to a different letter, moving the, the, the pictures around to where like, like if this doesn't work in this letter, I'll delete it and try to, maybe I'll try it in the M. I think that looks good. And it, it's not going to be perfect, right? Because these are letters. So they're not going to be like where you're going to always see everybody and nobody's ever going to get cut off or anything like that. So don't, you know, stress yourself out trying to make it super perfect. Like this one, I have no, I don't think I'm going to be able to get everybody. Uh-uh. I'm not going to be able to get everybody in that picture. So let's do this one. I think this picture is so funny. Their faces, they really do look like minions. <laughs> okay. <coughs> that looks good. And then the next one. Oh, you know what? I forgot my niece. I don't have any pictures. So I have a... um two-month-old niece. I was literally about to be like, my kids are my mom's only grandkids, but that is not true. I have a two-month-old niece. Let me see. I need to get that picture added because I don't want to make this and not her not be on it. Hmm. I have one. No, there we go. That's a good, no, that's not really a good one. I'm sorry, y'all. I should have been had this done, these pictures, but I'm doing it now. I got to add my niecey pool. And Gavin technically is not her grandson. Gavin is her nephew. Okay, so I'm going to reload this. I just uploaded the picture from my phone. And here it is. Okay, I'm going to add Nisipu to the, I think I'm going to add her to the Y. Let's see. Sorry, y'all. I got out of the comment section. If somebody's asking me questions, give me one second. Okay. Uh, 
Alrighty, I got one more I gotta do. Let's do let's do this one. So as you guys can see, it's just a lot of just kind of moving, shifting, moving, shifting getting everything kind of, like I said, it's not going to be perfect, like, right? So this, you can see that's Levi, but you can't see the whole picture, right? But that's okay. Okay, so... I think that's fine. I think that <laughs> I'm, I'll sit here and like, oh, maybe I should move this around or maybe I should move that around to death and I'm not going to do that. Okay. <clears throat> so what I wanted to show you was, um, thank you, Marilyn. Dee Dee, it's hard to do what? This canvas? Hey, everybody watching. Um, so for the outline of these letters here, um, I made them black and I made them a little bit thinner, but if you wanted to change that, you can change that as well. So if you highlight a letter up here at the top, you have your border color and you have your border style. So let's say you wanted to make the border weight thicker. You can do that here. So do you see how the border gets thicker or you can completely take it away uh, me personally, I just think taking it away um, makes it not really stand out. It kind of gets muddled with the background a little bit. So I think if you have a little bit of a border, it just kind of makes the letters pop. And then a cool trick in Canva is if you change the border weight, I think it's before you add. Let me see. Okay, so nope. If you want to change the border weight on one, but you don't want to go in and manually change it on every single letter, this little paint roller here, that if you hover over it, it says copy style. If you select that and then click the next letter, as you can see, it changed the border style to the second one, which was also changed to the first one that we made. So it's just a quick little way to change it without having to go in and manually drag it over on every single letter. And then to change the color, you can also change the color. You can either leave it all black. Um, if you want to change the color, you would just highlight your letter, go up to the border color and select the color. And you can even do the gradients on this as well. And kind of like in my, in my, um, the one that I did here, I made every letter a different color on mine. Um, for this one, I am going to leave the borders black. And then one more thing, you can change the like if you don't want a border, but you want more of a, a shadow. You can change that as well. You will highlight your letter, go up to edit. Actually, I don't think you, yes, you can. Go to shadows. You will go to the outline. Actually, no, it's going to do it on the photo. No, you can't do it on these letters, not these frames. There's other frames that you can add, like, um, like if you wanted to add a shadow to it, you would just have to, not on my template, you would have to make your own template because you can't do it on this. Like you might as, like if you would, if you would go that far as to change like these elements here, just don't buy the template. Just, um, it would be easier to just go ahead and make your own. Hopefully that makes sense and I'm not being too confusing. Hey, Eve, how are you? I got my package. Thank you, Eve. Hey, LaShonda. Thank you. 
Thank you, Benita. Benetta. Hopefully I said that right. Okay. And then um, you can also change. So this is outlined white. You can change that as well. You would just select the text box, go up to effects here as you like, it's already highlighted. So you will select your text box. Effects is already highlighted. You would just select effects, select your color swatch, and then you can change that too, if you wanted to. So just about everything can be changed to some extent except for the actual elements here. But everything can be manipulated somehow, some way. Now I'm trying to figure out if I like the pink better than the white. Mm, I'm just gonna stick with the white. I hadn't even noticed the paint roller tool. Yep, the paint roller tool, the paint roller tool that basically just copies whatever style you just did, it'll copy to the next element for you. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over. You can just like a copy and paste almost. It's really convenient. Hey Dimps, can you show us how to make the hue? Yep. Okay, so this is the way that I do it. I go up to elements and under shapes here, I just get a square. Um, if I need it to be a rectangle, I just drag it out. Um, but basically all you're gonna do, get your square. You can change the hue here and then lower the transparency. And that's how you make it. It's just, a, it's just basically a square. A square shape um, and then stretched out to be a rectangle and the transparency taken down. Yep, that was the Android. That was my that was my TikTok alarm. <coughs> my um I have a TikTok in my drafts mm -hmm. I need to post. Okay, I'm gonna basically leave it like this. Does anybody have any questions? Cause we're gonna go ahead and download, print, and um, sublimate this. And then to download, you go up to share. We're going to select <coughs> download. Um, because this is going to be a big image. Right, I'm making this, I think my canvas is 11 by 14. We're, we're making this big, we're blowing this up. Um, I'm gonna take this pixel size here. I'm gonna take this all the way up. This is gonna make sure that the pixels in my image are, are the highest that they can be. It's going to make my image the crispest and the clearest that it can be downloading from Canva. Um, because like I said, we're, we're, we're blowing this up. We're making it big. So when we do that, I don't want it to get pixelated or I don't want the resolution to get messed up. So we're going to drag that all the way up. And then I am downloading it as a PNG. And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use Silhouette Studio to print.
And this is the one that I made earlier for myself. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And then I'm basically just going to drag and drop into Silhouette Studio. It just might take. A little bit of time because we um made the pixels bigger there we go okay so here's my image i just dragged and dropped it from um so i didn't have to save it to my desktop because i got too much stuff going on on my desktop um so for this canvas i kind of I made this one a little bit too big because I wanted it, obviously, like, let's say we were to hang this on the wall, you would want your edges here to not be white. You would want it to be the same color as, you know, the rest of the canvas. You want the, the image to go over the edges because if you're hanging it on the wall, you don't want your edges to be, you know, white. You want it to all blend. Um so whatever canvas you're using, just make sure you're measuring and you're accounting for, you know, this little, what is this, an inch, a half an inch maybe? Make sure you're accounting for this so that you can get your image to wrap around these edges, okay? I made mine just a little too big. I think the last time I printed 12.5. So for this one, I'm going to do... I'm going to do fifteen point five wide and twelve high. And then I'm just going to kind of zoom in and make sure my picture doesn't look weird. But I don't, I don't want to make it too, too wide because I kind of did it on this one, the edge of the letter here. Now hopefully you can see went around the edge because I made it too big. So I think, I think that looks fine. I think I'm going to go ahead and print this way. Now I'm printing because I had to make this image so big. I am um, doing 13 by 19 paper. Okay, my TikTok posted. Put that out the way. Thanks, Dimps. Can I do that high for eight by 10? Yes. Didi, you can still do that for 8 by 10 or 5 by 7 So, Didi, I'm sublimating this, so I'm using sublimation paper. But if you were going to put this in a photo frame, then yes, I would use glossy paper. I think the glossy paper would look good if you were putting this like in a photo frame, like um how some of the other people are doing. They're putting it in the actual like 8 by 10 photo frames. That's fine too if you put it in a photo frame, even though the glass is um the glass on the photo frame is gonna give it a glossy look, I would still put it on the glossy paper. It would just to me, it would just look better. That's but that's a personal preference. Some people like matte better. It that part is a personal preference. I would do glossy paper though. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and print. I'm printing by with my Epson EcoTank 8550 which has been converted. <coughs> I just need to put some paper in there. I can't keep my paper inside the printer because if more than one sheet of paper is in there, it'll jam for whatever reason. I don't know if that, if that happens for anybody else. Oh, 
Okay. So we're going to go to print. I will quickly show you my settings and then I'll stop sharing while this is printing. <clears throat> so I do have my drivers installed. We're doing a Super B, which is the 13 by 19 uh, document size. I am printing borderless and this is going to be landscape. My paper type is the plain paper, bright white paper setting. My color is on color, and then my quality is at best. And then over here in the more options section, I do already have my mirror image checked. So the printer is going to automatically mirror this for me, which is why I did not mirror. And I have the bi-directional printing turned off. And I'm going to select OK, and then I'm going to select prints. Now, the bi-directional printing, I believe, is the fast printing. So because I have that turned off, it's actually going to print kind of slow. But let me go ahead and stop sharing. Um, does anybody have any questions while we are waiting for that to print? And then because I took my rollers out, once it gets to a point where there's a point in the printer where I have to like guide the paper out or it'll do something weird where like the back part gets all smeared. But when it gets to that part, I'll let you know. But I will have this, the Grammy template in my Etsy shop tonight. The mama one is already there. Um, my heat press is on. I did already cut out my white fabric. Um, I'm using some satin fabric, um, that I picked up from Michael's. I do have some linked in the description box that is on Amazon. Um, if you don't, if you're, like you don't have a Michael's by you, um, it's just regular like satin fabric. Nothing. It's not, it's nothing special. Like you can sublimate on satin, um, and it comes out just as clear as if it were polyester. So, but I think I got mine from Michaels. And then the canvases, I think I got the canvases from Michaels too, like a while ago though, because I've had those canvases for a while. But um, I think it was Natasha that said they have a deal right now. Yep. The she said all sizes they just have to be have to be back wrapped or something else. I forgot the other type. She said it was buy one get one free. That's a good deal. The ones that I linked were I don't remember. Okay, hold on. I don't know what it is about my paper. When it gets to like this little hump right here on the tray, it like, I don't know, starts doing something weird. So once it gets to like this little hump part, I have to like kind of guide it the rest of the way out. Otherwise it like gets stuck or I don't know. <clears throat> and that might have to do with the fact that I took the rollers out. I'm not for sure. Hey, everybody popping in and everybody in the chat. What is everybody working on tonight while we wait for this to print? 
one of these days I want to invest in the um the Epson, I think it's the F570. For as much sublimation as I as I do, you would think I would have it already. But you guys, I'm very, very cheap. Not cheap. I won't say I'm cheap. I'm not cheap. My husband would tell me I sound crazy for saying that. I'm not cheap. But when it comes to like big purchases or like spending my own money, like I don't have a problem spending a thousand dollars with my husband's money, right? But if I have to spend a thousand dollars of my own money, then I'm like, do I really need that? And I think that printer is what? 2400 or something like that? As much sublimation as I do, I should have been bought that printer. But here I am holding my paper while it's coming out the printer because I don't want to spend the money. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's broke yet, though. Y'all, this print looks so good. Yeah, it prints really, really large. It's just that. I don't know. I don't want to spend my money on it. <laughs> oh, that's why I haven't got an embroidery machine, too. I don't want to. I don't want to spend my money on it. I want somebody to buy it for me. Which is so crazy because you guys, I will literally go to Dunham's. Like my son asked me for a three hundred dollar baseball bat. First of all, did y'all know baseball bats, like the real ones, like the real legit ones, are hundreds of dollars? Like who? Why? Why are baseball bats three hundred dollars? I don't I don't understand that. And then he's only twelve, so like, there's certain size bats that in his league are illegal because of whatever one reason or another. I'm not sure. I don't know all the rules to the bats, but I do know that his bat has to be a certain size. It can't be above a certain size for his age. So it's like. It can't be a certain size, which means when he gets to be 14, 15, this $300 bat that I just bought is no good. Now he needs another $300 bat. So the $300 bats are only lasting two years. Okay. Here's our prints. Now, for those that are new to sublimation, you... That looks good. I was about to say it looks dull, but I mean, it does look dull, but with sublimation, it's going to come out dull, okay? I get a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people that, um, bye, Jesse, have a good night. I get a lot of people that message me and say, my print looks dull. Why does my print look dull? With sublimation ink, it's going to always come out dull because sublimation ink is heat activated. Um, it's not going to pop. It's not going to be bright, vibrant until after you press it. You have to press it to get that vibrancy. So when you get it, it's not going to be it's not going to be vibrant, but it should be clear. OK, hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see, my print, you can clearly see the pictures. You can see the images. You can clearly see the words. It should be clear. It should be legible. It shouldn't be blurry, but it will be dull. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So when we press this, that's when it's going to pop. 
because it's going to be it's, it's uh, sublimation ink is activated by heat. Yeah, Leslie, that's um, that's the thing. I really do want that Epson 570. I really do want that big one, but. And I actually thought, to be honest, I thought it was more than what it is. I think it's like 20, what is it? 24, 25 ish hundred dollars. That's a lot for a printer. However, for some reason, I thought that it was like $5,000. So I was kind of shocked that it was 2,500, but I mean, 2,500 is still a lot, so. All right, I'm going to add in my. Hello? Okay. Um, and I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to meet y'all over at the heat break. Okay. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is the set and fa fabric here. I, I did already cut it. But it basically just came in one big, like one big piece of satin fabric. I don't remember the amount of yards I had, but it was like one big piece of fabric. And then I just cut off the piece that I needed. Okay. Where is my canvas? Let me go grab my canvas. <clears throat> Okay, and this is the canvas that we have. I be saying we like y'all are in the craft room with me. <laughs> this is the canvas that we have. Um, this is what it looks like blank. I'm not gonna take the the this front part off or anything. We're just adding to it. So the first thing you want to do. When you cut it out, it, if the, your edges are rough like this, that's okay. You can clean it up either afterwards or you can tuck it, okay? However you want to do it. And then you definitely want to make sure before you press, you want to make sure that your canvas fits. Let me see if I can get y'all in the, in the frame better. Okay, and you want to make sure that, you know, it fits. You want to make sure you can wrap it and it's, you know, the size that you need so that you don't sublimate it and then realize your fabric is too small and it won't wrap around because then you just wasted a lot of ink, like a lot of ink. Like this image takes a lot of ink, especially like the first one I had had the black hue to it. So I used a lot of black ink for that image. You don't got time to be messing it up. Okay, so it fits, we're good to go. Let's go over to the heat press. Turn you around here. Now, let me show y'all what I did to my HTV romp. Sorry, you guys. I sublimated my HTV Ronk pad here, okay? You don't want to do that. You do not want to do that. So, my iPad feels backwards to me today. Maybe I gotta flip it over. Sorry, y'all, gotta flip y'all around. It's driving me nuts. There we go. 
Um, there. Um, so you want to make sure we're adding butcher paper to the bottom first. So I'm going to add a nice big piece of butcher paper to the bottom. And then we're going to take... My heat press goes the long way this way. Um, I know some of the fancier studios go out this way. So you would just turn yours. Whatever way is the long way for you. Put it the long way. So for me, it's going to go this way. Um, I'm going to give this a pre-press to kind of get all of these wrinkles out so we have a nice smooth surface. I'm only going to pre-press for about five seconds. But my heat press is on 400 degrees. Can you sublimate on the actual canvas? Um, no, because it's cotton. So what you can do is, um, why do I look like that? What you can do is um, you can um, laminate it if you want to sublimate onto it. Or I don't know if it's cotton, but it is, I mean, it'll take the color. I've done it before. I'm just gonna trim some of this right off. I've done it before. It's very, very dull. Um, it's very, very textured. It doesn't, it doesn't really look good in my opinion. But I have done it to where I added this the lamination sheet first and sublimated it onto that. And it smoothed it out and it gave it made the colors more vibrant. Or you can add the satin fabric, which of course will smooth it out and give it the vibrant colors as well. What size? Um, this is a 16 by 20. Okay, so now I'm going to place this down. Now I have an auto open. So I love my auto open. Love, love, love my auto open. But the one thing that it does that I do not like when it goes to open well, sublimation, if you don't grab that handle or have your stuff taped down well, hold on, this is, no, it's over too far. Hold on. It's going to pop up and create ghosting. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down really, really well on the sides. Right now, I'm taping the paper to the satin fabric. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape from the paper over the satin fabric onto the butcher paper. Because when this top pops up, I don't want it to lift my image up off the satin and then put it back down. If it lifts and puts it back down really fast while it's still steaming, steaming hot, that's going to create the ghosting. And you don't want that. I would say that's the only thing I do not like about these auto opens. All right, I'm going to take another sheet of butcher paper here, cover both the, the satin, the image, everything. I'm going to put this back on 50 seconds. So we're at 400 degrees for 50 seconds, and we're going to go ahead and press. Um, but yes, mine's a 16 by 20. It goes this way. I've seen 16 by 20s that go this way. So whichever way is the long way, just um, sublimate it that way. Hey, everybody watching, everybody popping in. Thank you for being here. Hey, Brandy, thank you so much for, for that. I appreciate it. 
Hey, official Diaz. Thank you. Do you set the color that high for photo paper? What do you mean? In the settings for the best? So you see how I didn't just let it pop up. I, I hold, held my handle. And now I'm going to hold down the butcher paper while I lift up my top. And that's because I don't want it to pop open. Because this has happened to me before. It popped open. I just let it pop open. And it took my whole image and lifted it up off the bat and then dropped it back down. And then I had a whole bunch of ghosting and it looked terrible. So, all right, we're going to remove the bits of paper. Now this part, you want to be careful. You can either, I'm going to turn this off now because I don't, crossing my fingers, I don't need it anymore. Um, but when you remove your tape and stuff, you want to be careful. But again, you're not moving the image or you can wait for it to cool down. I'm being a little impatient, so I'm just going to carefully start to remove some of the tape. It's also really, really hot. I'm going to actually move this over to my table because it's super hot. <clears throat> um for photo paper um I want to say yes now I don't remember off the top of my head because when I print on photo paper I use a different printer <clears throat> but I do still believe I put it on best And I'm just removing my tape, not really rushing it because, I mean, it's cool. It's cooled off quite a bit now, but still don't want to take any ghosting chances. Y'all can't lift up nothing with my nails. Everybody always tells me how cute my nails are. And I'm like, I can't pick up nothing. Okay, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, sublimation will never get old to me, okay? Come on, colors. These look so good. This one looks better than mine. Now I want to redo mine. Here is our fabric. Let me turn my ring light. So here is the satin fabric and here's the print. And now we got to get this onto the canvas. So look at those colors. 
This camera, I, I hate this iPad camera. It's really not doing it any justice. Okay. So now getting it onto the canvas, I just kind of, and I got like little shreds here. Now this is just a matter of placing it onto the canvas. I put it down and I smooth it out because I want this image part to be smooth. I don't care if this, you know, outside is smooth or not, but I want the image part to be nice and smooth. And then I take this and, oh my gosh, you guys, I made it too big. Yeah, I made it too big, but let me see. Okay, and then you take your stapler gun or whatever you're using to adhere it, and you're just going to staple it down. Watch your fingers, obviously. And then this is the part where I said, um, if you use the flat one, you may not be able to use the stapler gun because it's flat. So you don't want to staple through it. Now I'm doing the second part and you wanna make sure you're kind of pulling it tight. You don't want it to tight to the point you you distort the image but you want it to be tight enough to where it's not like flapping on the canvas either I'm just kind of sticking some in there just to see how it looks and then I will clean it up in one second So I did make the letters a little too big because as you can see, the Y is going around the edge um, and the G is going around the edge too. So when I go to staple it, the G will go around the edge and so will the Y. So to combat that, I will go into Canva and then the We Love You down here is going around the edge. And then here is going around the edge. So to fix that, I will go into Canva Pro and highlight all of this text, all of these elements, and highlight this text here and just make it smaller scale the work just the words just scale the words in because the image looks fine i could have moved this down a little bit so his head was more on there because i don't care if the feet wrap around so hopefully that makes sense but that still looks good so i'm going to continue on so we can see the final product these are just staples so <clears throat> I'll probably, because I, I just plan on giving this to my mom. Um, so I'll just remove these staples, fix the image, and reprint it, and resublimate it. But I just want to show you guys, oh, sorry, I'm not even in the camera, how I do it. So I'm just going around the edge now. This corner here, I just kind of like tuck it and roll it like this and pull it tight on the corner and put a staple right here. Uh-oh, I think I'm out of staples. I am out of 
love staples. Y'all, if it ain't one thing on live, it's another. That's all right. I know where they are. They're in the back. I don't even know how to take this thing out. I forgot. Oh, there we go. Um, where'd I put them staples at? Hmm. Hold on one second, y'all. Let me see if I can find them staples. I don't remember where I put those staples. So I guess I can't staple the other side. It's somewhere around here. If I were staples, where would I be? Hmm. Well, not gonna hold y'all up looking for them staples but basically hopefully y'all can see it and i'm gonna go back over to the computer so i can show you guys but you see how the letters are just a little too big so i just need to go in and scale the letters down but that's about it i'm gonna head on over to the laptop and I'll show you guys how to scale the letters down just in case you run into this issue and then we'll be pretty much done. Okay, so here is the final I gotta fix it just because um I was I was actually making this as a gift to give to my mom but um as you can see I made the letters just a little too big because the G wraps around here and so does the Y and then so does the letters here and I want everything to be in down here they wrap down and I want everything to be on the canvas so in order to Fix that. Let me. Let me show you how to fix that. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Can you sublimate on a satin pillowcase? <coughs> Diane, yes, you can. So um I actually another way to do this is if you don't if you don't want to buy the fabric that I saw some people in the groups that were doing, they were purchasing satin pillowcases from Dollar Tree. And they were cutting them like at the seam. And then you would have two, basically two sheets. If you were doing two canvases, like if you didn't want to buy the big piece of fabric. Um, some people were saying that they did that. Hey, Donzel, it's okay. No worries. Glad you're here. Um, D, yes, you could if you wanted to. If you wanted to make it longer, like you didn't want to reprint this, you could just add the wood piece to make it longer and then wrap there if you wanted to. Absolutely could. Okay. 
Okay. So let me um go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go into Canva Pro and I'm gonna show you what I'm what I mean by scale the letters down. So as you can see here, there's not that much space on this side or on this side or that much space on the bottom. So what I meant by scale the letters down would be to basically just select this letter. We're going to hold down the shift key. We're going to select this, select each element because they're all separate. And then we're going to go down here and select this text box. Once you have everything selected, you can just go ahead and scale it down to accommodate for the edges. So this should fit now to accommodate, you know, those sides. That's how you would scale it down to get it to fit. So I will probably, like I said, reprint this um, and redo it. Not on live today, but um, I'll probably make a reel or something. But yeah, if you run into that issue where you make your letters... Um, just a little too big, like I did, that's how you would fix it. Go, just go back into Canva Pro go or go back into your template and just scale your letters down, just adjust them a little bit and reprint if you want to. Or you can do what, um, what she asked about adding the, if you wanna add more wood to your canvas, like you don't wanna reprint because you don't wanna waste the ink or the material, you can just add a piece of wood to the side here to make this longer and then it'll stretch out further. Or maybe if you can find a canvas that's a little bit bigger than this, you could even use a different size canvas if you wanted to just use the same um, print. Okay, but look at the colors. But that is how you use the Canva template. Um, that's how I did it on the frame. That's how I got it on the frame. Um, I just used a staple gun. Everything I used, I'm link, I, I did link in the description box. Most of this stuff I was able to just walk in and pick up from my local Michaels. But um, if you don't have one near you, again, I did link everything, everything in the description box. But that is pretty much it, you guys. Does anybody have any questions? Before we go ahead and get out of here for tonight, I told you I wasn't keeping you guys that long tonight. <coughs> I think my flu is coming back. I've been feeling a little, just a little under the weather the last couple of days. No, no questions. All right. If you have any questions or if you're watching the replay, drop the comments down below. I will definitely try to get them answered. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. <coughs> you could have been anywhere else, but you are here with me. And I always, always, always appreciate that. Um, yeah, Canva is pretty... When I first started using Canva, like, I've been using Canva for maybe five years now. And um, it has come a long way since when I first started using it. Turmeric and ginger tea. I have some. Maybe I'll have my husband make me some. All right, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Go lay down, drink some tea. I will see you guys. Um, CJ, you don't have to have pro. Where pro is going to come in at is probably going on this specific project is going to be the download. Um, but I do believe you can pretty much do this whole project with the free version. The, the, the letters might be different. Sometimes the letter frames, um, the way that they look, those are pro features, but they do have free frames as well.
not all of them are pro and not all of them are um, the free ones, but. All right, y'all have a good night. Bye.